Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and in this video we're talking about things that you throw away and things that you don't throw away. And we're going to start with some things that you should get rid of. I'm in my potato patch here, which is doing really well. It's one of the better uh, crops in the garden this year. The garlic has done really well, and the potatoes are doing really well. The tomatoes, right over here, are starting to come in. But uh, at least in terms of uh, foliage growth, the potatoes look like they're doing pretty well. But there's a part of the potato plant that you want to get rid of, and I actually miss this right here. Uh, the flowers of the potato plant, uh, you want to get rid of those. They will create a fruit which, as far as I'm aware, uh, has some of the toxic alkaloids that are in the rest of the plant. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's not of any real use to you and it just takes energy away from the plant. So you want to nip these in the bud, literally. Uh, I have some that haven't uh, really opened yet and this is kind of the, the better stage to get them at, is when they're kind of like that. As soon as you see that, you just kind of nip that off and that'll make it so that the potato plant's putting more of its energy into the parts of the plant that you want. So these are the things that you, you should throw away. And now let's pop over to some, uh, some construction that I'm doing right now. And we're gonna talk about uh, some things that uh, I'm glad I didn't throw away. On our way over here, you can see that the beans are doing pretty well. They're not the healthiest crop of beans I've ever had. In fact, you can see all the yellow in here. It's because I'm presuming the soil is, it's not great soil here. I just kind of tilled up this triangular shape pattern, put a little bit of cow manure on the top. Uh, put a little liquid fertilizer in there, but uh, you know, it's not the best soil. Although one thing about this is working really nice is it's just this meadow in the middle and it brings in a lot of pollinators to the clover and other flowers in there. So uh, that's been working out okay. We'll see how many beans we get out of that. But um, you know, so far I'm happy with it. So we're working on finishing up this. I think yesterday I did a video where this wasn't covered at all. We have uh, all the boards going across here. I'm about to put in the last board right here and I'm really glad that I kept this scrap piece of screen. This is a mesh that I used for putting, I'm just gonna get the camera off the tripod here and kind of show you what I used it for. If you might recall, if you watched this series for a while, I stuck some of this uh, mesh under, underneath this gap between the exterior wall boards and the foundation, the idea being that I'd be able to uh, prevent mice and things from digging up through here. I, I, sh I shoved the, the mesh up and then I spray foamed with a uh, pest re resistant foam that has like something in it so pests don't want to nibble through it. Uh, so this is uh, kind of embedded in there uh, and I'm, I'm about to cap this but there's still this going to be this passageway here and this piece of mesh right here is going to work perfectly. I'll just kind of ball this up and, or maybe, maybe kind of crumple it into a cylinder shape and I'll just kind of mush it all in here when I put the board up here. And, uh, and that should work out uh, really nicely, I would think. So I should be finished with this in just a few minutes. Uh, and then it's on, on to other things. One of the big projects I want to make sure that I get done this summer is underneath the, uh, the roof eaves over here. Uh, I, I want to get the support uh, under the, those sections. And also uh, the, the trim that is on the edges of the greenhouse. Uh, when, when we get a lot of strong wind, that stuff's not really completely held down. I'm, if you've been watching the series for a while, you might recall that I made these little fingers up here, and these fingers kind of help to, to hold this stuff down. You know, these just hold it down temporarily, but I really would like to finish this up, you know, ahead of hurricane season. We've been really fortunate. We haven't had any hurricanes come up through our area, but our area is certainly uh, the type of area you could get hurricanes. And, uh, you know, I, that's the next project I'm going to start focusing on. Before I let you guys go, though, I do want to mention a more learning curve that I've been experiencing with uh, the chicken coop. I'm really convinced that this, this is not a good way to do a chicken coop inside. It's just everything that I've learned during COVID and I feel like I've learned quite a bit. We've been 100% successful in avoiding COVID and everything else. So I feel like I've gotten pretty good at using my instincts for avoiding illness. And all my instincts are telling me that this is wrong, having the chicken coop on the inside. It's just, it's too difficult to keep your hands clean and your feet clean and your knees clean and everything like that. It's uh, it's not a good setup. So, you know, here on my channel, I like, to, I like to share the successes, things that I'm doing that I think work really well and things that I try out that I don't feel work out. And this is one of those things. I, I had a fair sense that I probably thought that it was gonna kind of go this way. And it, it does feel like this is not the way to do a chicken coop. I'm sharing that with you. The way to do a chicken coop is to really kind of keep it separated from your living space. Uh, I mean, that, that was the, the, the dawn of germs and animals. Uh, you know, humans getting animal germs was when you bring animals into your living space. Not a great idea. Chicken coop's gonna be down there, but I gotta get rid of that forest first. That's it. Thanks for watching.